Hey everyone, welcome back to the Automotive Logistics and Supply Chain Red Sofa uh, here at Automotive Logistics and Supply Chain Global. I'm with Anna Marquette, Senior Vice President for Supply Chain at Stellantis North America. Uh, thanks so much for joining us here, Anna. We've been on a panel um, talking about leadership and leading organizations in the supply chain at, to, to, to say the least, disruptive times. With that disruption, how has it changed the way you think about leading and developing your teams in supply chain? Um, as we've already discussed, right, being empathetic, right? What does it mean to be empathetic, supportive, part of the team, making them feel like they are part of you, you are part of them, um, and we're in it together, right? So as a, as a collective team, as a collective unit, um, and being truly supportive, keeping calm through the chaos, um, and, and again, working together. It's, it's, it's a very strong team that I have. Um, and I'm very proud of the team I have, and I just make sure that they also hear that very often and how grateful I am um, to have them support us through these crises. And, and we talked about this on stage, but I want to share with our audience. You know, we talk in general about labor shortages and challenges in recruitment, um, but it sounds like in your supply chain organization, you, you haven't had that. Um, can you talk a little bit about why you think that is? Yeah, I mean, we've had some team members leave to go to other industries, um, but I also get many phone calls from other organizations of Stellantis that want to come to the team, um, which is pretty amazing, right? Which says a lot. They want to come to all the facets of supply chain, which is fantastic. Um, and, and we get to pick, you know, the ones that are change agents, the ones that are going to be supportive of the team and really understand what it means to be a team. Um, so we've been very lucky. I've got a lot of great leaders um, that are drawing in great talent. And I, I mean, I suppose it, it's also useful that you have so many of the different functions in the organization, inbound, outbound, crisis management, supply, demand. So we could have opportunities to both develop and, and, and move people across different functions too. I, I agree. I think with everything that supply chain has lived over the last couple of years, I think everybody's been able to really see the different facets of what does supply chain mean, right? I mean, even some that do know it a little bit, and once I explain to them all the different jobs or all the different opportunities that we have, um, they're quite shocked, right? So, but to, to your point, there's so many different avenues that they can go, and it doesn't mean they have to stay there forever. Um, but again, like we discussed on the panel, it's they could take 20% away from that job and apply it somewhere else, and they might use that 20% in five years. So it's never a waste um, to go into roles that you might not necessarily go to comfortably. And on that, when we, we talked about your career path over the, over the last years, when you started um, on the shop floor in assembly and various different parts of production and operations, I and mean, it sounds like you still have some manufacturing in your heart too. You know, what does that meant or what does that mean even now leading a, a complex supply chain organization? And, and why do you think that that's so valuable for team members? Um, well, the one thing that, not one thing, lots of things that I've learned in manufacturing um, and, and the different cultures, mm -hmm. right? So there's so many different cultures and I'm Canadian and I was in a Canadian plant. I was in a Detroit based plant. And what does that mean with cultures and how do you as a leader um, get the team to be cohesive? How do you get them to work together? Um, so it, to me, it's, it's very important um, for them to understand it, right? So complexity, again, in manufacturing is a different complexity than corporate world, right? But the same team concept and how do you get things done? How do you problem solve? How do you help teammates together um, to get through it? Um, and, and it's very difficult. It can be very difficult. You know, manufacturing was very rewarding for me, but very difficult as well, um, just like managing through crisis was yeah. and is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I, I wish I can say that by the end of this interview, we'll have solved all those crises, but I suspect we won't. Um, but on that point of, of crisis and, frankly, the attention that supply chain gets the, um, compared to perhaps previously, uh, both in society as well as in um, organizations, does that, A, give it more or give your department a more influence? And, B, um, what does that mean for you as a leader? That's a, a responsibility, then, of how you use that influence. Yes. Um, you know, again, people really understanding what we do. Um, we've been able to make change of things that have been like a status quo where, you know, it's always been like that. Eva talked about that on our panel. It's always been that way. So I did it that way. Um, and, and this has morphed into, again, we've got a louder voice. We, we have a seat at the table um, to be part of the strategic planning um, within the organization. So we've had some really good wins um, through Semico um, crisis, right? Really trying to balance 
what is best for the company, right? Um, and, you know, sometimes it was like, here's eight different scenarios. And here's how we can now, as a leadership team, discuss what is the best option for our company. So it really, really um, has morphed into that of like supply chain having a larger seat at the table, which is great. And, and maybe a last point. I mean, we're in a time of, of technological transformation for the product, the way that we build the product, uh, also the way tools we use in supply chain, um, artificial intelligence, machine learning. Do you think that the presence, the growth of these technologies and change, does it also change the way you think about leadership or, 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 or perhaps the way the organizations will be led in the, in the near future? I don't think in the near future quite yet. I think we're all still learning AI and what can we do with it. Um, and how we can benefit from it. Um, we just had a workshop a little while ago and I gave them a, a few things on my wish list, right? But it was it's more of how to support the team, how to add value to what they're doing as opposed to non-value added activities. Um, so I don't think very much in the near future, I think we're all still learning what AI is and how it can help us um, near term. So I'm excited about the data part that it can help us with to maybe get to decisions quicker. Um, and again, that was part of my wish list uh, for the AI team and within my company. Yeah, I think uh, yeah to, to use AI to have better visibility and understand impacts of changes across the supply chain. 100%, right? How can we maybe, you know, look at complexity? If we reduce complexity, what does that mean to the value chain all the way to the bottom? Or opposite, right? If we're adding complexity, what does it mean across the whole value chain? So that was one of my wish lists. And it's a, and it's a great wish, and it's actually something that came up in, in sessions, and uh, everyone wants would love to have that, and what a game changer it would be. But um, really, thank you, Anna, for sharing these thoughts on, on leadership, on how the supply chain and supply chain organization is changing and we look ahead we were so pleased to have you at the event and share some of this with our audience and uh, we look forward to sharing more in the future as well well thank you thank you for having me it was very a humble experience for me so thank you that's our pleasure thanks again everyone